Hello and welcome to the video walkthrough that goes alongside my uh, January 2021 script article uh, titled uh, Running Umbreco on a Raspberry Pi or How I Stopped Worrying and Learned to Love Linux. Old movie reference there for you movie geeks. Um, uh, uh, I'm not going to go through too much of the article in this video. This is more about the setup. So uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, uh, you can use a micro SD card, but I'm actually optionally setting up, I've set, set myself up an SSD because it's a faster way of doing this. Um, I have already gone to the Raspberry Pi um, uh, site and downloaded this image, just the basic image. You can get that if you want to, it's cool, there's some good stuff in there. Um, and I've already used Bellina Etcher to copy that image onto my boot disk. So I've plugged in my boot disk, I've plugged in the HDMI monitor keyboard, all that stuff. Uh, so all I'm about to do now is to go through the initial setup process. Um, let's say there is a, a quick start guide of how to go through this over here, but I'm going to just be going through that very quickly myself. This is hopefully a single take beginning to end video recording so let's see how that goes so i'm gonna oh, just i should apologize my audio quality isn't amazing and i'm still learning how to use obs so this is all probably gonna have a few hiccups in there but uh yeah we'll all learn together so i'm gonna switch to my capture port and hopefully aha we have signal. That's encouraging. So this is just a Pi booting up now. And this is what you'll see the first time you log in if you've chosen a desktop version. And I suggest that you do for the first time you use this if you haven't before. So I'm going to hit next. Uh, my locale is British English, so this is all fine. I'm going to hit next again. Now here is where they recommend you set a new password that's not the default password. Obviously, this is a good idea. So I've done that. Um, now, yes, there is a black border, so I'm going to hit that, and now it's going to try and get onto my network, so let's get you onto my main network. No, it's wrong. Hopefully this works. There's a lot of waiting around the Raspberry Pi, I should warn you. So um, this is the 4, which is the most recent and most powerful one. Even that is, you know, it's a $70 computer. It's not going to break any records. But it is still astonishing for what it is. Um, okay, so uh, I can do an update to check now. But I'm actually going to skip it. Because I want to do some other things um, before I restart. So one of the things that I can optionally do, and I... Uh, talked about this in the article is I don't normally have my Pi set up permanently with a mouse and a keyboard and a second monitor and all that stuff because it takes up space but I I network onto the Pi I connect over uh, the SSH protocol um, and also sometimes using a protocol called VNC now I need to enable those on the Pi um, but once once they're enabled and running I no longer need to have monitor plugged in. You need a monitor plugged in for this initial setup, but that's about it. Once uh, once you set your network access up, 
um, and say you're able to do pretty much everything you want to remotely which makes it a lot easier to work with so if you go into preferences and configuration um, the host name is Raspberry Pi so you can change that to something you like um, I tend to leave it to auto login as current user it's a much easier way of doing things um, the, okay so next thing you want to do is come to the interfaces section and you want to enable SSH and VNC now if you enable SSH as a, an added extra you also get the ability to FTP onto here so if you're wanting to test stuff um, you're able to um, set up a deploy from Visual Studio directly to the Pi over FTP if you want to do for example um, which is quite cool um, that's pretty much all I need to set up inside here everything else here is fine so I'm going to say OK uh, and it's going to ask me to want to reboot again I'm going to say no because I do want to do one last thing and that is set up a static IP uh, the static IP basically means that this Pi on my local network will hold and grab it at an IP address which again just makes it easier to con to, uh, to to connect to so sudo this is in my um, doc there is a section about static IPs down here somewhere there you go so this is where I talk about setting up uh, SSH and VNC and here you go this is the static IP guide which you can follow. So sudo nano nano is the uh, editor that comes with the Pi. I don't know if it's a Linux thing. I've only ever used it in the Pi. Hcpcd.conf. So this file is effectively a configuration file that the Pi uses. Um, to set up its networking and what we want to do is come down the bottom and in my instance I've connected uh, not oops here we go this is the one I want to do sorry uh, I, I I don't, I'm not configured or con connected on uh, Ethernet but on wireless. I can just get rid of all of this, it doesn't really matter. So rather than ETH0, I'm going to use WLAN0. Uh, and my static IP address is, I'm going to give it 210. I don't care about. The IPv6. I'm going to set up name servers and DNS servers. So, I'm oh, sorry, um, um, the router. Sorry. So, uh, this basically lets this Pi boot up on this IP address 192.168.0.210 every single time. Once you've done that, Control X to oops, Control X. Yes to save. Okay, so now I want to do a sudo reboot. And this will restart my Pi. Ah, or reboot, in fact, rather than rebot. Okay. This will now disappear. So okay. So now the Pi is restarting. Now, when the Pi comes back up again, I won't need to try and connect through the remote desktop connection. I can actually do it uh, over SSH. So I have a command line command prompt over here, uh, which is just a standard Windows command prompt. Comes up Windows 10. 
I'm just going to shift focus to there. And I can connect to my Pi by going SSH Pi at Pi being their default username. Um, 192.168.0.2.10. I can use the um, DHCP, but uh, I, it doesn't always find it because it's a new device in the network. So uh, this is the first time I'm connecting. Ah, oh, of course it is because this IP address uh, has the same connection that I had before. Okay, so I'm going to just switch back to USB capture. And I'm going to try a different IP address. I've used that IP address before. So, sudo nano gcc slash dhcp cd dot. I could clear it, um, but I don't remember the exact command, and this is faster than. Googling it. Um, there you go. So, 211. Right. sudo reboot. Uh, sudo stands for super user do, um, apparently. So, um, that basically is a way of using administrator rights to. Uh, to, to do things that a normal user or a normal um, account wouldn't be able to do. Things like setting up networking, setting static IP addresses. Now we're just waiting for my Pi to restart. This might take a second or two. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Here we go. So now this is a new IP address. This key has never been added to my uh, local key store. So I'm going to say yes, I want to allow this key. So now I can connect in. Fantastic. Um, ah, one thing I didn't configure um, on the Pi is a password for VNC. So. Now that it's back up again, I can also go to VNC and go to Options. And it's defaulted to Unix password. I've had this flake out a few times and it didn't always work when I try and VNC with the Unix password. So for ease of use, I find it's easier to set this to this. Use a, uh, just a a fixed password so it's not tied to a specific user it's tied to the service effectively so I'm just gonna set that up now oops can't type This should mean that when I switch back to my main display, I can use the VNC client, uh, which is in the links in the document, to remote desktop onto the Pi itself. And now I can use my main keyboard and mouse on my main Windows computer to connect to the Pi. Right, so. Uh, we're back in. We haven't really done um, anything other than set up static IP addresses, enable the services SSH and VNC, set up the right users, uh, connect it to the Wi Fi. Okay, so the next thing to do is check for updates. Sudo apt. Oops, I'm going to just make this a little easier for you to see. Okay, so uh, sudo. minus y. So this is basically going to connect to its online um, update source for the Raspberry Pi operating system um, which is based on Debian 
and download all the updates to the various packages that it has. This will take some time, so I'm probably just going to skip this until it's finished. Just so you're not sitting here staring at me. Um, yeah, let's do updates. Oh, okay, that didn't take that long. Okay, so the next thing to do is sudo apt-get upgrade minus y. The minus y flag just forces it to say yes because I want to update all everything effectively. Now this second upgrade part will take a bit longer. Um, but yeah, we, we need to go through it really. Um, and there's, uh, once this is done, it's probably safer to also reboot as well. So I'm actually going to just do a quick bit of housekeeping on my article whilst I'm waiting for this to finish. I prepared some jokes for this section. I don't really have any. My daughter's current favourite joke is what's for dinner? Atoms, because everything is atoms. Or, or the alternative what's for breakfast? Atoms, because everything is atoms. That's, that's her current favourite joke. As you can probably tell, we hear it a lot. a lot of updates. I mean the encouraging thing is that they are obviously supporting this and keeping it up to date. I mean I only downloaded this image at the beginning of December, I'd say around the 10th or 11th of December. And even from then till now, it's you know it's a month, and there are a lot of updates to do. Now, obviously, understandably, they may not package every single item into it, 
So, okay, the updates are done. Uh, we're just going to do a quick reboot. So, um, whilst that's rebooting, uh, the f we've, we've got as far as basically getting everything ready. Everything is ready now to, to actually start. So the next thing to do is to actually get .NET Core running. Now there's extended instructions on the um, Microsoft website for how to get it up and running on um, ARM devices, but because it's a pain in the butt to do that, I am, I've written with the excellent help of Pete Calico um, a script to effectively install everything to do with .NET Core in one go. So. Uh, let's see if our reboot has happened. Yes. Okay, so I'm in now. Right, so now I can effectively copy this. Um, go to my Pi. Oops, that one. Paste it there and. It's doing it. So this will basically download all the dependencies for .NET 3, .NET Core 3.1.4.4 and um, ASP.NET Core. Uh, and it's the latest released version. Um, yeah, uh, this is the version that .NET, uh, the, the the project Unicore, the, the .NET Core version of Umbraco is currently being built on. I presume because most core three projects will get migrated to either five or six. I don't know which is the long term support version, whether it's five or six. There is no four obviously because of the confusion between .NET Core four and the .NET Framework four. Lots of people have talked about this stuff. Um, there's plenty of stuff you can go and read about it, but um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, so I presume that they will either move Umbraco to .NET 5 or 6, whichever the long-term support version is and going to end up being. Uh, and I'm just going to make another bit of housekeeping, note, which I've noticed in my article while this install is happening. This in itself can also take a bit of time. Time I try and do something else, right? Okay, so the next thing to do is just type, make sure this works okay, and yep, it looks like it has installed okay. So I'm going to do another reboot now because of these all new libraries that we've added. But before I do, it's the usual sudo apt get. It's very unlikely there's any updates over here, but you know, this is just get into the habit of doing this every time. If stuff doesn't work, you'll save yourself a load of time by A, checking for updates, B, restarting the device. This is still a little, you know, an early days device. Oops. Yep, okay, so, so boot for hopefully the last time. Right, whilst that's rebooting, um, So now it's rebooted. Uh, .NET Core should be up and 
up and running and we can in theory you know write a quick laser app write a quick dot and go console app all of those things quite easily on here um, Pete has a load of videos on his website where you can go through that kind of stuff um, there's links in the in the references so the next thing to do is um, follow the instructions on the .NET Alpha article uh, for how to get um, Umbraco up and running. Now um, I've scripted that as well just because I like scripting things not because I'm lazy. Um, so uh, let me just switch back to here to show you that yeah, so the, the article is, is linked there, uh, and you can just follow the instructions on there. Um, and it just goes through setting up the NuGet sources and the templates, but yeah, I just put all that into a little Lembraco script. Um, so, switch back to my command prompt. Copy and paste that. Okay, and this is just installing the templates and and all the other bits and pieces that it needs. Okay, right. So that's all done. Um, and hopefully we can see there you go, Umbraco Empty Solution is now a, a template that we're allowed to use so that's been added to our to our list of templates so now um, I'm going to switch back to there minimize that and go right, ok so we want to create a new Umbraco project um, we're just going to use a default template. Now, Umbraco uh, Core at current um, supports both SQL Server and um, SQL CE, but SQL CE does not run on, on, I can't remember if it's either ARM or Linux, it doesn't run on, on the Raspberry Pi anyway. Uh, I think it's it does it's Linux full stop that it doesn't support, so you, right now you'll need a SQL Server database. Um, if you don't know how to configure a SQL Server to accept TCP IP externally, there's instructions here. Um, just follow that through. I've got a local SQL Server running on my Windows machine with a blank database and just to prove that it's blank, there's nothing in the tables. So that's just all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to connect to that. Uh, and I'm going to start, can't copy for some reason, uh, and in my command prompt, why isn't it copying and pasting? There, okay. So I'm going to create a new project called Umbraco Pi. This is going to effectively set everything up. <coughs> saying missing template to use this template run the problem command and try again so let's do that um, I may have messed up my script 
so I will go and check that out and if I have messed up my script I'll correct it This is a first run through, obviously, and um, yeah. Come on, demo gods, you can do it. Has there been a new update? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to ignore my script and do this the manual way. <clears throat> so that's added that. Don't know why they didn't work through my script, but running it manually worked. Okay, so I'm going to remove that script from the document. Um, follow the manual steps. I'll amend the article to affect it to reflect this. Yeah, so I should now see a folder called in bracket pipe grid. So now I'm in here, I can just do dot net uh, build. Oops, sorry, I've adjusted the screen too much. There you go. This will now compile everything, set it all up. I guess this is, as I, as I mentioned, a learning exercise for me as well, and clearly uh, something I've set up in the installation script for the in brackets side isn't working. So again, that is this script down here, I need to look into why that's working, but if you follow the instructions here, that should be fine and that that's this is what I did and this worked. So I'm still waiting for this to work. Now this is obviously compiling the project with the reference NuGet packages. There's not a lot in it but it's got the bracket source there. Right, okay, so now we're effectively ready to run. Now, you're not gonna see anything over here because effectively, whilst this command is running, the thread is, is, is up, up, locked up doing that. So, um, what we now need to do, if you had this uh, running on a monitor, you could you'd just open up um, Chromium, but I don't, so I'm going to use VNC, connect to my Pi, um, 
fire of chromium. Don't worry about flash player, right? So And then one. So obviously, this does not have a valid key, but I'm cool with that. I'm not recording this. Okay, good start. I'm just going to stop and do that again. Right, okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this from running with control C. So, by doing the build, you can see it's created a bunch more folders inside that previously it was just program CS, startup CS, but now we have bin, arch folders, and bracket folders, WW folders, app data, all the stuff that was created by building it. So I'm going to switch to main capture. Now if you're plugged in on a monitor this is what you'd see. Uh, so I can also on here go to bracketpy.net run. That's not going to do anything because that's now running the application. I can then go to chromium And I can go to five thousand and one. There we go. Just took a second. Right, so now we are running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, ignore the background. Actually, no, it's probably easy to read with the background there. Uh, on a Raspberry Pi in Chromium, running locally. So I'm going to. Oops, can't spell my own name. Super secure password. mark that'll do and this is where we need to connect to my uh, windows box so here my windows box is 192 so 192 pi Super secure again, but again, this is local, so it's okay. Right, and now it is installing Rocco. Um, now, obviously, this isn't. 1920 by 1080 just because I haven't set my Pi to run at that. You can get them to run a high resolution, but this one is fine. Okay. Now, this sometimes happens. Uh, because the site has restarted. Now, that restart is part of the process itself, so you just hit .NET run again. And the installation should have completed. And when it's spun up, that's fine. Come on. There we go. Right. Again, this can take some time.
there we go. Right. So. And there we have it. One alpha, so not entirely fully functional, but uh, one Umbraco backend. Thank you, Tor. As great as you are, I'm not going to follow you through. Uh, running on natively a Raspberry Pi. Now this can run, can be any Linux box, but this, you know, if you're if you're like me, have only ever used .NET Framework, uh, only just looking into .NET Core now trying to get into it and trying to find out where all of our uh, jobs will be taking us in the next few years. Uh, this is a great way of, without too much effort, you know, getting up and running on an instance. And there's more exciting things that you can do. There's a bunch of other ideas, but this is, to all intents and purposes, you know, a fully functioning Umbraco back office. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Any questions, uh, find me on Twitter. Find me on GitHub. Find me, um, I would say, in a pub, but that's not very likely. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry about the bugs. Thank you, demo gods. Right, I'm now done. Bye. Bye.